All right. Hi friends, my name is Doug. Welcome to the Third Style Garage. Dale and I are, on, are working on a 66 Beetle convertible named Hendrick. And uh, today we are beginning work on the driver's side rear quarter. Stay tuned and see how this goes. So we did the passenger side rear quarter uh, in the last episode and it was a learning curve for us in butt welding sheet metal um, and we are eager to see if this one goes better and more smoothly. So you can see the previous owner overlapped a patch here underneath. Uh, there's a weld along this seam here and it's functional. Uh, Bondo was really thick. Looks like they pounded this in with a hammer. It's kind of caved in a little bit and we're striving for better for th than that. So Dale's going to get started on this soon. I'm working on a little patch over there in the front panel, the front fender well. Um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to take these spot welds out. Hopefully this lets go. We have a clocker home panel to work with. Uh, and we need to figure out how to make that bad boy work. And it's probably not gonna work well. It's probably gonna take some finesse, but we're gonna slowly start dismantling this, try to take this out, uh, retain as much of the original sheet metal as makes sense. And uh, we don't know what anything looks like underneath here. So we're gonna have to uh, figure it out as we go. So we're gonna get to work taking out spot welds and uh, excavating till we get down to bedrock and have good steel and good shape to work from. Later, we're gonna address all of these pinholes and the ripples that I'm assuming somebody pulled out a dent with or something. So that will be coming in some future episode. Thanks for staying tuned and we'll see how this goes. So here's where we are. We've got uh, the worst of the patch removed. This guy's now flapping in the wind. There's still a low spot here where I'm assuming they beat it down because they just set a patch over top of it. Um, this seems to be original. They just laid the patch around it. So we'll probably blend this in and try to keep the original. We'll have to figure out what to do here. But um, our next step is to figure out, okay, how much of this do we want to keep? Do we want to go all the way down? This bottom is not in great shape and there was a, an ugly butt weld or overlap weld underneath here. So. We know we want all of this to go away. We know this needs to be original. Uh, it's really important that this curve stays the same. So that will guide us. And then uh, what we learned last time is this dimension on the bottom needs to match the door. So this lower edge here has to be flush with the door. The only way you know that is if the door is in place. The only way to know if the door is at the right height is to match this body line here. Um, so we'll have to figure out how much of this we can have stay, but all of it's going to be uh, cutting pieces and parts out of that. So next we'll be taking that and trying to figure out how, where we want to blend it to that. So uh, it's not real exciting watching us scratch our heads. So we're gonna go back to scratching our heads and we'll show you what we came up with when we're done and, and why we're doing what we did. Um, inside here, you can see previous patches from the inside, a little hole that we missed. I'm embarrassed to say there's some little porcupine needles there. Don't tell anybody from my welding. Uh, but overall, that patch looks pretty decent on the inside. All right, back to it. After the meeting of the minds, here's what we decided. This whole edge is flopping in the breeze. It's only attached over here. 
we are gonna go up right on the inside edge of this radius. So I'm gonna cut with a cutoff disc right there, all the way along this side, leaving this surface, but removing as much of this leg as I can. So this piece will go away, leaving this whole surface here, which is rather pristine in that the curve is nice and smooth and correct. So we don't wanna mess with this if we don't have to. We know all this has to be replaced. So we are going to cut this piece off and then bend up a small piece of angle. We're only gonna go down. Uh, we'll match what we did on the other side where I think we only went down about three eighths of an inch or so. Uh, maybe a quarter of an inch, we'll match the other side. That way, the running board will mount um, to the heater channel and not mount on this flange. Um, and then I will weld up this edge here and try to blend the radius down so none of this gets changed. And then we'll use the patch panel for this here. If we try this, and we mess up this line here and that welding doesn't go well and it warps all over the place, our backup plan then is instead of cutting up here, we'll cut down all the way and we'll use the patch panel instead. So this will be attempt number one. If that fails, we'll use the uh, patch panel as our backup. Uh, we also have a couple spots that have some holes in the heater channel that we will patch up first. So uh, first step, cut this out and then uh, see what it looks like. That's the plan, it's just a plan. All right, we're about to wrap up for the night. It's our end of our Wednesday night. This is my uh, patch piece I made. I'm gonna charge Dale extra for it because it's, it's Mustang steel, which is guaranteed to make the Volkswagen Better, faster, better built, and more valuable. I'm waiting for comments from the peanut gallery <laughs> behind me. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. Holes for spot welds that will go underneath there on the heater channel. Uh, it'll sit approximately like that. We've got it obviously very proud right now. Uh, Dale's gonna show kind of what happens as he flexes that out. But we don't know for sure how far out that's supposed to go. Um, so we're going to compare it to the other side to make sure it's close. We're also going to compare it to the patch panel just to make sure we don't vary from that too much. But I think what we'll end up doing is putting a couple tack welds, like maybe one there, uh, one down there, and then we're going to grind this edge here slowly to fit the, the curve of the body panel. Uh, but before we tack it in, we're going to check a couple things. We'll put the door in place to make sure the bottom of the door lines up with this. We don't want this to be too low so it hangs below the door or we don't want it to be too high so there's a step. Uh, the door should be perfectly flush with the bottom here. Uh, the other thing we wanna do is we wanna sight with the door in place, we wanna sight down the line to make sure that this body curve looks exactly the way we want it. And once we've got this curve the way we want, the height the way we want it, uh, and this tacked in place and we're feeling good with it, then, uh, then we'll grind it down and uh, weld it uh, in for sure, and then move on to this part. So we're gonna pick up from that next week, which will be in a second for you. Hello friends, it is uh, the next Wednesday and we are back at working on Hendrick again. As you can see, we've got the door set in place. Hi Dale. Hey. So we've got the door set in place and that is uh, for us to set these body lines. So what's critical for us is that this line is even across, this line is even across and we put a straight edge on the top here to make sure that this transition is as straight as we can get it. And then we're trying to check the same thing at the very bottom as well. While we're doing that, we're also trying to watch the body curve 
of the door, the radius of the door, um, how it flows into the rear quarter to make sure that we have things the way we want them. If we need to, we can adjust this by bending this out and that affects that curve. Um, my hope is that it being in its natural relaxed position is where we want it to be. And based on some initial measurements from this quarter, um, where it wants to sit is, is about where it seems like it needs to be. So with the door set in place, we're going to try to, can you grab that patch? Yeah. Uh, we're going to try to fix this with two pieces of metal. The first one uh, we made just a straight piece off a of Mustang. Um, I think we talked about that last week. It's going to go right on the bottom here and then we will kind of weld across the top and form the bottom radius of this quarter panel. Uh, also welding on the front too. Right now the way it sits is it's a little low so the bottom body line of the door is a little bit high and then it drops down not even a sixteenth of an inch. So. I think we're gonna trim a little bit off the bottom of this, trying to make it as straight as we can. Also trying to make this as straight as we can. So that's that's our first goal. And I think we're gonna do a little grinding and tack that in place. And then we've got this large patch here that we're gonna be working on cutting off just this section here and making this patch. Uh, if we do that, and if that goes well, then we'll only have this joint here to try to blend in as opposed to one going all the way across the quarter, like on the last, yeah, on the other side. Um, so that's our plan, a little bit of grinding, uh, tack weld this in place, and we're gonna start well uh, cutting this patch to fit. I'm assuming tack weld it in place and we'll make sure everything is the way we want it before we final weld anything. Am I missing anything, Dale? No, that's it. Now we just got to do that, make it happen. You so just. Just. <laughs> just got to finish up, then we'll be done. Your tack welds in place should hold it while we work on the rest of this this we can trim off later and get rid of what we don't need to can't add it on later so i left it long now all right time to start uh, fitting this patch so we're gonna probably start transferring some lines over to this cut it a little large fit it trim it fit it trim it uh, approximately 42 times. And then uh, we'll show you how it fits nicely and it'll look like it went fast. So we got our patch. Closer. <laughs> uh, we are long on all sides. It doesn't fit worth a hill of beans. You can see we got a problem there. Yeah, hold that. So we're deciding one thing is what all needs to get cut out behind here so it fits. The second thing is how do we begin to line this up? So a couple thoughts that are going through our heads. One is we need to locate these to fit the fender, but the fender actually has pretty gigantic holes in it. Um, so I don't think that's gonna help us locate it. Um, we know the bottom of the quarter here needs to line up with the bottom of the patch. That's got to be one nice, even plane. So that, that's a known point. Um, the other known point that in my mind is critical is the ridge here, this peak. This curve of the fender that the bead will go in has to continue down evenly right through here until it intersects this plane. 
And if we get that plane set and we get that curve set, I think that will do a fairly decent job of locating our piece. The challenge right now is we can't push this thing in. See how we got this big ugly gap on the top and it's wobbling around. That's because it's all hitting that mess. Looks good, looks bad, looks good. Um, so we're starting to remove these pieces and uh, we can see some original stuff here. This stuff wasn't done as well. So we're gonna start working on removing the pieces that we need to so that there's room for these nuts because right now they hit this. It's never good when there's not room for your nuts. And uh, we'll have to figure out how to make this work. I'm laying on my back here underneath the car. Sorry if I'm shouting, I got earmuffs on. We are trying to figure out this piece here. Um, we're not sure if it's original or not, if it was what purpose it serves. So it's welded to this piece in the inner rear wheel well. Um, so we're gonna cut it out, see what's behind it, and have to, if we have to refabricate it, we can. Um, we just can't figure out a way to get our patch here to fit with this in place. If you can see, maybe I can zoom in digitally, but there's this curve here. This piece looks to be original. This piece is not. This piece cuts the corner on an angle, which makes our patch not fit. So I'm gonna get in here with a cutoff wheel and cut this off and we will uh, remove this piece Let's see what we find. Time to cut. Time for the big reveal. Hey! Success! Might be hot. So here's what it looks like underneath. That I think goes into the heater channel. Uh, looks like compared to the other side and the parts beetle, they're supposed to be a piece like this that goes in here, but we don't know what it originally looked like or how it was originally supposed to attach. If we go to the other side here, you'll see that there's a piece in here, but we we ended up just pounding that one and to make it fit and welding it. Um, so that's not a great guide for us. So we've got a little research to do. Um, we may need to figure out how to reshape this one. Don't know yet. We also have a little bit of cleaning up that we can do. There is a weld down here that just can be ground better. Maybe uh, fill in some holes in the weld. Here you can see the rubber molding for the body to pan gasket. Time to scratch our heads for a little bit. So we're making progress. Um, it is the next Wednesday. The patch is getting closer to fitting. Um, see how I'm um, just cut it long and I've slowly been grinding to get it to fit. Um, hold on, let me set the camera on the tripod a second. I try to explain a couple of challenges I'm running into. Um, obviously I want this part of the quarter to be flush. I'm also very worried about this ridge on the fender because your eye will see that. I'm a little less worried about this valley inside because that will be hidden by the fender. But I think I need this ridge to be a little sharper of an angle um, because my valley is a little bit proud from my factory valley. 
Uh, the other thing I'm running into is the whole thing is kind of pivoting on this welded nut on the back side. So this clocker home panel, which is needs a lot of work, has the two welded nuts on the back. The top nut goes right into this gap. The bottom nut hits right there. So I'm working on creating clearance for that nut. The other challenge that I have is the clocker home panel on the bottom. This gap is not the same as I think the factory was. So just like I had to do on the other side, I cut a slit here. Um, right there, you can see it so that I can collapse this and then I will have to re-weld that to get it to fit. So we're at this spot where I uh, just need to keep patiently working forward. Uh, kind of curious what Dale's up to. It's been quiet in the background. Let's go see what Dale's doing. Hey Dale, what are you up to? Breaking another Volkswagen. Break, breaking <laughs> another Volkswagen. I'm working on the rear quarter. What are you doing here? Um, you know, really rusted fender bolts. We're eventually going to need this fender off so we can use um, some of this this quarter panel piece. Probably, you know, we've got a really janky uh, angled part where the fender attaches, and um, we're hoping that it might be better on here. So, but these bolts haven't been out in a long time. So, how, how many are coming out? How many are broken? Um, so far, just one of them's broken. So I've gotten lucky. I think I got three or four of them out that uh, PB Blast helped out. Um, but I'm just going to kind of make my way through and not be too impatient. Uh, it'll be a while before we get to that spot anyway, but something yeah. to do. All right. And this is, uh, if you missed earlier episodes, this is the Merriman Beetle, which is a 64. Four. And uh, it was your neighbors who he kind of loaned, gave it to us to use any parts we can. And then uh, there's really not much salvable on it. So, all right, back to my quarter. Have at it. All right, let's get this thing to fit. We are to the point of tack welding it in. I took the patch and sandblasted it. I've got one tack right there, one tack right here. You can see how when I sanded it lightly, it didn't grind here, which made me think I had this panel a little bit lower than that panel. So I want to be real careful with that. Um, so what I'm doing is putting one tack weld on, letting it cool ambiently, no compressed air, then grinding the head of the weld off. And then uh, if I don't like the way that it's sitting and I need to plenish it or pound it or push it out from the back, I will and get it right where I want it to be and then do the next tack weld. I um, think I'm gonna put my next tack weld up here, but this is sitting a little proud of that. So I think I'm gonna stick a screwdriver in there, just flex it out just a touch till I get it sitting right where I want it and tack weld and do the same. So uh, just gonna go real slow, tack one well, tack weld one, let it cool, grind it, and carefully look at the next one and, and do my best to get it all as perfect as I can. Show you progress in a minute. I think it's time to wrap up for the night, but we have a decent amount of tack welds in. Um, and I am feeling really happy with how that blends in. It's not perfect. I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna need a skim coat, a Bondo, um, but wraps around there. We have not tack welded that in yet. Um, we, we, I didn't videotape the doing of it because um, we were very focused on doing the best we could. Uh, bear with me, I'm gonna flip over the top. We did a lot of it by Dale um, pressing on the back side with a hammer 
uh, like the handle of a hammer. You can see the edge of the patch down there. Um, so Dale would flex this out or flex the patch or flex the body. Um, so we could get the curve of this the way that we wanted. Um, and sometimes we'd put a tack weld in and it would cool and it would suck down a little bit. So then I would grind it flat and then Dale would push on the back of it with the handle of the hammer, kind of over flex it a little bit and then it would relax back, over flex a little bit until we got it where the, the weld kind of, you know, bent so that the joint stayed where we wanted it. So that's where we are. Leaves us in a spot where it's hard to quit because it's kind of fun to see it come together. And next week we will pick up where we left off, uh, finish spot welding this, and then uh, I need to do this joint all along the bottom and then grind that radius to match this radius. So stay tuned for more. Thanks for following along. This is the semi-finished product of the joint. I just welded the bottom, so this is a little warm yet. Um, it's, it's not perfect, but it is uh, better than the previous side and a heck of a lot better than it was before. So it's gonna require a skim coat of Bondo through there. Um, Dale and I are gonna tag team on some of the welding, so or grinding, so Dale's gonna grind this yet. Um, I drilled three holes here and did plug welds and then did plug welds all across the bottom as well. I'm pretty happy with, so this surface coming down here is the original body panel. Um, we made this angle piece here. Um, and then I welded this edge and just ground this flush and ground that flush and gave it a little radius and um, that really lines up pretty well from one side to the other. Uh, skim coat of Bondo on here and uh, I think we'll have a great looking quarter. We may experiment with buying a one of those stud dent pullers because we have a low spot right here and there's a little bit of a low spot right there and we can always fill that with Bondo if we need to, but might be nice to try to get it a little closer. The last task we have is we, there was a patch that was over here. If you remember from the previous episode, the research we did seemed like that was an aftermarket patch that was purchased to go rust repair there. And then that piece wasn't original. Um, I think we're okay running things the way they are with the exception of the fact that there's this hole here that goes right into the heater channel. So we are going to put this little patch in there, weld that shut and make that hole go away. We don't know what that hole was originally for or if there was supposed to be something else over that or not. Um, not a hundred percent sure, but that's the solution that we're going with. Um, we also modified the back of this, so we have both um, welded nuts in there in case we want to use those for the fender. I think the fender only has this hole in it stock. We may just leave this covered up, or otherwise we'll drill another hole in the fender and put an additional bolt in. So, a little bit of cleanup, but we are going to call that a wrap. Thanks for uh, watching. The videos haven't been coming as frequently lately. Sorry about that. Life is a little busy, but um, we'll keep moving forward. Have a great day. Be kind to everyone and uh, call your mom, tell her you love her. Bye.